What's up, meatbags? It's the Alpha Imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD, and you're watching a clip from the latest Gabby with Geeks live stream. Now, if you like what you see, like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, with that all out of the way, let's get into the latest clip from Gabby with Geeks. The FTC is suing Microsoft. This is a bit of a ton, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the Federal Trade Commission is suing Microsoft. Uh, when, when I thought of the FTC suing somebody or getting involved in a video game company, I was sure it was going to be the Intellivision Amico. I think that's yeah. next on the radar. Uh, After the deal with Microsoft. Yeah. All right, so this is from Box. It says, the U.S. government wants to stop the biggest deal in video game history. Microsoft is facing a U.S. antitrust suit again. Uh, FTC Chair Lena Khan testifying at a congressional hearing in May 2022. Uh, says the Federal Trade Commission is suing to block Microsoft's massive $69 billion acquisition of video game giant Activision Blizzard, saying it will harm competition in the gaming market. This is funny because I remember you saying last week how, oh, yeah, it, it's England that's holding it up now. That you're, you're. Oh, uh, I thought I thought it had FTC approval, and that's what I was thinking. I thought the comp Competition Marketing Authority in the UK was going to stop it, but it seems like the FTC don't want this going through because it's, uh, it's it's on like uh, some kind of monopoly law or something yeah. like that, isn't it? Antitrust. Yeah. Well, it did go through, but they they, they sued to block it, and it went through. But now they're trying it again because they just can't let it go. I don't think this thing's going to go through. I think there's too many people, too, too many uh, government agencies not wanting it to happen both sides of the pond, so I don't think it's going to happen. All right, it says, uh, the move is FTC chair Lena Khan's biggest yet against a big tech company in her year and a half tenure. Since Khan's surprise appointment to the chair of the Consumer Protection and Competition Agency in June 2021, many have waited to see which big tech merger Khan would go after, believing it was not a matter of if she would block a merger, but when and which one? Man, I think that's kind of bad. You don't put someone in charge of like, hey, this lady's like fucking itching to just stop some shit. Uh, the deal will be closely watched by media and tech companies that would like to snap up smaller players, but have been wondering how aggressive the Biden administration would be about this mega merger. Biden's Justice Department has already stopped a much smaller merger this fall by successfully blocking by successfully suing to block book publisher Random House from buying rival Simon & Schuster. Here's what I don't get. What if Simon & Schuster just go out of business and then Random House is just left anyway? So it's like, you might as well have let them buy it, right? Yeah. It says, Microsoft managed to avoid most of the scrutiny and criticism that its big tech peers have endured over the last several years. And there was a sense that it already had its big reckoning and learned its lessons back in the late 90s, early 2000s when an antitrust suit from the Department of Justice nearly broke up the company. Then Microsoft decided to make the biggest acquisition in its history, as well as the history of gaming in general, and become impossible to ignore. Uh, the FTC suit notes that Microsoft has a track record of buying gaming companies and making some of their titles exclusive to Microsoft's platform, including the Xbox console and Game Pass, its game subscription streaming service. It argues that Activision makes some of the world's most popular games and that Microsoft could make them more expensive or harder, if not impossible, to play on competitors' platforms. And when did Activision become this, like, end-all, be-all video gaming? I suppose it is. I mean, it's not end-all, be-all, but I mean, I suppose it is a big a big deal in the gaming market, isn't it? Call of Duty's huge. Can't argue with that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's big, but they're treating it like, like I said, like, this is, like, it, like... Once you get them, that's it. You don't need the rest of the, the stones. This is the last Infinity Gauntlet stone. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft has already shown that it can and will withhold content from its gaming rivals. Holly uh, Vidova, director of the agency's Bureau of Competition, said in a statement, Today we seek to stop Microsoft from gaining control over a leading independent game studio and using it to harm competition in multiple dynamic and fast-growing game markets. Uh, man, they just called Activision an independent game studio. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little tiny, yeah. <laughs> it's a little, little tiny studio. Uh, for its part, Microsoft says the acquisition will make competition better and be great for consumers. A line that its president, Brad Smith, 
repeated today in response to the lawsuit. We continue to believe that our deal to acquire Activision Blizzard will expand competition and create more opportunities for gamers and game developers, Smith tweeted. He added that Microsoft tried to make concessions to the FTC to avoid a lawsuit, which his company intends to fight and believes it will win. I'd love to hear what those concessions were. It says, Smith and Microsoft have been increasingly vocal about various peace offerings they have floated to placate Washington, most of them centered around Call of Duty, Activision's blockbuster game franchise. The company has repeatedly said it would continue to license Call of Duty to other platforms, notably Sony, which, is also has a, uh, which also has a game console with exclusive game licenses. And this week, Microsoft announced a, a plan to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo Switch consoles. Who the hell is going to be playing Call of Duty on Switch? How can they make a how can they announce a plan to bring Call of Duty to Switch if they don't actually own? <laughs> they don't even own it yet. Yeah. They don't own it yet. Surely they can't be making those deals. That's weird. It's very weird. Microsoft. You know what's even weirder? Yeah. How are the games? How are fucking Call of Duty going to run on Switch? Uh, I don't know. I see. I would never buy a, a like a. a third-party game on the Switch. I only buy Nintendo exclusive games on the Switch. Yeah. I don't see the point. Like, when Witcher came out on it, why would you want to play a fucking inferior version of Witcher for more more money? Just to play it in a handheld? No, you're okay. Thanks very much. <laughs> play it on my, uh, <laughs> play my PlayStation on my 65-inch television. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft has some basic logic in its favor when it comes to Call of Duty. It would be enormously costly if it cut off a huge part of the gamer's user base after buying it, which is the same reason that AT&T didn't prevent other distributors from selling HBO subscriptions when a telecom company owned what used to be called Warner Media. But in the press release announcing the move, the FTC focused on Microsoft's track record with Bethesda, a game developer bought for $7.5 billion in 2021. Microsoft decided to make several Bethesda's titles, including Starfield and Redfall, Microsoft exclusives, despite assurances that given to European antitrust authorities that it had no incentive to withhold games from rival consoles. Uh, this isn't the FTC's only battle with big tech. The agency inherited then re-upped the Trump administration's antitrust suit against Meta and then created a new fight with the same company by trying to block Meta's acquisition of virtual reality game developer last July. Uh, but while Khan is best known for her critiques of Amazon, the FTC took no action against Amazon's $8.5 billion merger with MGM. Uh, given the agency's limited resources, Khan has to pick her battles. Microsoft and a $69 billion merger is almost as big a battle as it gets. Peter Kafka. It's Kafka. It's kind of fitting that Kafka reported on this. I don't know. I, I kind of want my mega corporations. I want my... A dystopian future where three companies own everything. Yeah, as much as, guys. yeah, as much as uh, I don't want to see games becoming exclusive to Microsoft consoles, um, I don't believe any government agency should be able to stop two two publicly traded or private companies from merging. Uh, and so, not only am I a communist, I'm also a capitalist. Uh, in who is it that mentioned that before? Josie Perez. He says they didn't block Disney's acquisition of 20th Century Fox. That's true. That went through quite smoothly. And you could argue that that's just as bad as this, if not worse. Or is uh, as much of an more of a monopoly than this would be? Because I don't think that Microsoft would stop uh, Call of Duty being released on PlayStation. And I don't think I know they, they were saying a couple of Bethesda games were not gonna they were gonna be exclusive to to. Xbox, but I think that's just so that they've got exclusives, but I don't think they would make the um, Elder Scrolls exclusive. I think that would still be cross-platform. Yeah. Well, uh, Ashton Vandal has given us some uh, insight into Miss Khan here. He says, Khan has Amazon. described herself as belonging to the new brandist movement, a political movement that seeks to a revival in antitrust enforcement. She also went after Amazon before in her earlier days as well. Uh, Google, too. Uh, apparently she's only 33, which is pretty young for someone uh, in such a high position at the FTC. Is this her here? Yeah. And she's 33? Fucking hell. She's at a hard, a hard journey to that 33. <laughs> uh, one inch bicep says, but Disney knows how to make problems go away. Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> uh, so this could be it. This could be the end of 
uh, Microsoft's acquisition. Yeah, so if it's not this hurdle that it stops it, then they've still got the, the CMA in the UK to go through as well. I don't think it's going to happen now. Yeah. I guess that fucking uh, deal with the Nintendo Switch is not happening. Well, it might. They, I mean, they could still get uh, sign the deal with Activision Blizzard itself, couldn't they? They could. They could. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out and how much longer it's going to drag out till they finally say, hey, it's not happening. Or it is uh, going to happen, and some people have fancy new mansions, uh, like this con. Yeah. Money makes the world go round, so we'll see what happens. Well, there is people getting rich off this. Tons of lawyers. A whole, whole gag of lawyers. Thank you for watching another clip from Gaming with Geeks. And remember, you can catch Gaming with Geeks live every Saturday at 7.05 Central Standard Time. That's right. We go two, three, four hours. Sometimes we go all night. And we're always having fun. And if you're looking to see more from the show that this clip was taken from, you can click the link that's on your screen right now. Or you can enjoy another video from this channel by clicking the other link. And remember, if you haven't done so, subscribe. Thank you. And as always, love, peace. Booty grease. I'm out this bitch.